Meerut One of the oldest cities of India It is located at approximately 70 kilometers northeast of India's capital Delhi in the state of Uttar Pradesh The city carefully preserves the history that over the centuries played an important role in shaping modern India. The British even went to the extent of carving out nation's largest cantonment that provided a strong military base for British expansion in North India. As history goes, the region of Meerut came under British rule in 1803 after the Treaty of Surji Anjangaon between the British and the Marathas. And in 1806, the Meerut cantonment was formed. As you move towards the 3500 hectare Meerut cantonment, the well-preserved British era buildings a clear reminder of the days of the raj however deep inside this area is situated the st john's church that stands tall in all its splendor the church building represents the style of english parish church architecture which was very popular before the gothic revival and is structured on the classical design its impressive spire visible from miles away continues to inspire stray souls to take refuge in the eternal peace forever present in its sprawling premises with space enough to accommodate 1500 people it was built at a cost of rupees 56000 by the east india company the architecture includes an upper seating area which is no longer in use this historical church carefully treasures in its bosom the history of hundreds of men women and children who exhibited their grief for their departed ones in the form of memorials that adorn its walls in a period that traverses almost two centuries Built in 1822, St John's Church holds the distinction of being the first church erected by the British in the upper provinces. The church was consecrated by the Right Reverend Thomas Fenshaw Middleton in the presence of the then Governor General of India, Marquis Hastings. The church still houses a huge but non-functioning pipe organ which employed manually operated bellows to supply the organ with air. The wooden pews and kneelers, brass eagle lectern, exquisitely carved wooden chancel and the pulpit haven't changed much in the last 2 centuries. As one carefully analyzes the contents of hundreds of plaques plastered on the walls of the church the history of british conquests and annexations of the powerful states into british india begins to unfold St John's is a church which beautifully illustrates the development both military and political during the early part of 19th century undertaken by the british 
in North India, in particular. There were two important incidents. One was the subjugation of Nepal, which took place around the beginning of the century, and the second was the annexation of the Sikh Empire, which took place around the middle of the century. We have a large number of memorials in the church erected by the regiments that took active part in the bloody and gruesome Anglo-Sikh wars that saw the falling of more than 2,000 British soldiers and officers. For instance, the statues at the southern entrance of the church were installed by the officers of Bengal artillery in remembrance of those who fell in the campaigns of Satlaj and Punjab. Besides, there are a number of plaques that speak volumes about the Great Wars. Meerut Cantonment's direct involvement in British expansion plan was seen almost three decades before the Anglo-Sikh Wars. It was during the massive British attack on the Kingdom of Gurkha in 1814. In this expedition, out of four army divisions employed to launch a simultaneous assault on Gorkha land from different directions, one was formed at Meerut under Major General Rolo Gillespie. This division originally consisted of 1,000 Europeans and 2,500 native infantry, totaling 3,513 men. However, despite the ambitious plan and well-executed strategy to vanquish Gurkha resistance from the western frontiers of Nepal, company commanders made a terrible mistake. They underestimated the strength of Nepali perseverance and their mastery in hill warfare. Congratulations, my lord. Infantry reserve into the center. But my lord, you've taken the field. Now we should take their spirits. Send the entire battalion over that hill and crush them. It ends today. The third division suffered heavy losses while it tried to take over the Kalunga fort at Nalapani. It was the valor of only 600 Gorkha men and women, captained by the legendary hero Bal Bhadrakova, who repulsed every attack by the company force, which outnumbered them by six times and engaged them for more than four weeks. According to one account, the Battle of Nalapani left 31 British officers and 732 soldiers dead, while Gorkhas lost 520 warriors. One name among the fallen British officers was that of Sir Major General Rolo Gillespie one of the most celebrated British generals. His monument is located at St. John's Church Cemetery that marks the grave where his ashes rest. It took the British almost two years to force Nepal to sign the Treaty of Sagoli, according to which one third of its territory was surrendered to British India. In addition, Certain other conditions were imposed on which the King of Nepal was compelled to sign. By the middle of 19th century, the East India Company had consolidated its position in India to a large extent. But somewhere deep inside, Unrest was brewing against the suppressive policies of the colonial masters. The volcano erupted on the evening of 10th May 1857 in Meerut itself. 
on that fateful day of 10th May 1857, the service of St. John's Church had been postponed for late in the evening because of the extreme summer heat. The Europeans who had been living on the Indian side of the cantonment started moving towards the European half of Meerut cantonment. At about the same time when the uprising occurred in Southern Bazaar, that is around 5.30. That was one big reason for the high number of casualties among Europeans that occurred on that day. Around 50 Europeans were killed on 10th May at Meerut. According to the records of St. John's Church, 32 of these were buried within St. John's Cemetery. Today, we find 9 of those graves existing within the church, including the grave of the first man to be killed in the uprising of 1887, Colonel John Finnis. There is only one tablet within the church which links it directly to 1887 and this is of McDonald's. This lies on the upper story of the church and is in memory of this individual who was killed in the uprising. Soon the revolt assumed massive proportions and engulfed other cities in the upper provinces. Although the uprising was brutally crushed by the British, it definitely germinated the seeds of patriotism, uniting every Indian in the process. Freedom's struggle kept gathering momentum with each passing decade. Exactly 90 years after events that took place in 1857, India got independence from the British rule and became a republic. It's been more than six decades when the Indian flag was hoisted from the Red Fort for the first time. But St. John's Church continues to reverberate with the same spirit and stands as a mute spectator to the changing era. Unlike during British days, the congregation comprises entirely Indian Christians, though the service is still conducted in English language. The church administration is governed by the Diocese of Agra, Church of North India, and ritual patterns strictly follows Anglican style of worship. Congregation comprises 40 plus families and it's only during Christmas and Easter when a sizable number of people worship in this church. Reverend Dr. Peter Baldev, presbyter in charge of St. John's Church, proudly associates himself with the oldest church and sincerely wishes to be part of celebrations when this house of worship turns 200 years old in 2024.